All right. Well, you know how the rest of the world uses kilometers, the metric system in general, and in the United States, we don't. We use feet, inches, pounds, and the rest of the world uses the metric system, kilometers. This is what we're used to. This is actually a better system. It's easier to use. It's based in base 10. This is all wonky, 12 inches equals a foot, three feet equals a yard, etc., etc. But we're used to using this one. We really should switch over and use this one. Well, the same thing happens with angles. You can measure angles in degrees. You could also measure them in radians. Here's where radians comes from. Suppose that you have a circle with the radius of one. Okay, there's circle radius one. Then the formula for circumference is two pi times the radius. So in this case, that would be two pi times one, or in other words, just two pi. Well, circumference means go around the circle one time. So go around the outside part of the circle one time. So when you do that, you complete one circle. If we were talking about degrees, that would be 360 degrees. If you're talking about radians, that would be 2 pi. So in radians, this would be 0. And then when you go halfway around a circle, that would be half of this. So that would be pi. When we do the same thing with degrees, from here, halfway around a circle, is 180 degrees. So 180 degrees is equivalent to pi. Now I write equals when I really should write equivalent to because this is basically like two languages. Like if this is the word for cat, this is the word gato. So they mean the same thing. They're not exactly equal. Cat does not equal gato, but they represent the same idea. Anyway, that's a small detail. So, pi in radians, and sometimes it's written as radians, sometimes it's written as rad, and sometimes it's written as r. Usually, it's not written at all, because this is the system that's used most of the time, the radians. Now, how do you convert? Well, if you take this equation right here, and you divide both sides by pi, then 180 divided by pi equals 1. So if you multiply anything by 180 over pi, it's the same thing as multiplying by 1. So it will change the system without actually changing the value. Or I could have divided the other way, divide both sides by the 180. So pi over 180 is also equal to 1. And these two little fractions, that's the Rosetta Stone. That's what you use to convert between the two. So for example number one, convert to radians. Part A, how about 30 degrees? So we're gonna be multiplying by one of these two fractions. And I want de degrees to cancel. So I'm gonna use this where it has degrees in the bottom or the denominator. So then, with a red pen, I can have degrees cancel, so it's now in radians. And to reduce, a 30 will divide into a 186 times, so this will be pi over 6. Now, an important note is you don't have to write the word radians, or rad, or r. So for example, if it said, hey, I want you to find sine of 7, is that in radians or degrees? You're right, that's in radians. If it had a little circle above the 7, like this 30 degrees did, then that's in degrees. But if it doesn't have anything, then it's understood to be in radians by default. Then part B, how about, let's go with 45 degrees. So again, you multiply by pi over 180. So it's gonna be some fraction of pi. 
So you could reduce 45 divides into 180 four times, so it's going to leave one fourth. Or you could take just this 45 over 180 part, 45 over 180, and then go to math and change that to a fraction, and it'll reduce it for you. So it's one fourth of pi, or in other words, pi over four. Now for example number two, convert the other way around. Now convert these to degrees. So how about pi over 12? So basically, I only have these two choices. And I'm trying to change it to degrees, so I use this one right here. That way the pi on the bottom will cancel the pi and it will leave degrees as the answer. So multiply by 180 degrees over pi and then if you have a red pen, you're allowed to cross out the pies. And now what is 180 divided by 12? And I don't want a decimal, so I'm gonna go math, change that to a fraction. Oh, it's a whole number anyway, it's 15. So 15 degrees. And when the answer is in degrees, you do have to put that little circle above it to indicate degrees. Then, just a moment ago, I was saying what's sine of 7. So because that doesn't have degrees, that's in radians. Even if it doesn't have a pi, if the little circle is missing, that's in radians. So you do the same thing, multiply by 180 degrees over pi. And nothing cancels out, so I just need to do this on the calculator. So 7 times 180 divided by pi and that is 401.07 degrees. For the next example, find the exact value and I know what you're thinking. If it says exact value, then we're going to be using one of these two. I like the way you think. You're right. So find the exact value of sine of pi over 6. So notice on these, they're in degrees. They're in degrees. So the first thing you need to do is take pi over 6 and change it to degrees. So that means I want degrees to stay, so that's on top, and I want the pi to cancel, so that's on bottom. Now it's time for, you guessed it, the red pen. Those cancel. And then a 6 will divide into a 180 30 times, so this is really 30 degrees. So I should be using the 30, 60, 90 triangle. And the sides are, across from 30 is 1, across from the 90 is 2, and across from 60 is the square root of 3. So sine of 30 degrees. So here's the 30. Sine would be opposite over hypotenuse. So the answer is 1 over 2. Or in other words, a half. Then it's time for a calculator friend. So right now my calculator is in degrees. So I'll do this one right here. What is sine of 30? And because it's in degrees mode, I don't have to put the little circle. So it equals a 0.5, which equals a half. Now let's do this one. So go to mode, move down to where it says radians, hit enter, and then put second quit. Now when you do sine second pi over six, it equals the same thing. 
So this one can now be circled. That one's right. For example number four, how much is tangent of pi over two? Okay, how much is pi over two? So pi over two multiplied by 180 over pi. And then it's time for the red pen to do his job or her job, I haven't really looked closely. Anyway, 180 divided by two, that's gonna be 90 degrees. Now we got a small problem because you have to draw a right triangle. And then this angle right here has to be 90 degrees. And believe it or not, that is not a triangle. So we're not gonna be able to use opposite over adjacent. We'll have to use something else. So let's go with this. If you start on the x-axis and you go this direction until you get to the y-axis, that's 90 degrees. Now that means that the terminal side, so one side is right here and one side is right here. It's not making a triangle because I can't make the triangle go this way. So there's a point on this side right here and you could pick any value you want. So for example, that point could be zero comma one. So that means X equals zero and Y equals one. And the formula R squared equals X squared plus Y squared That is actually the equation of a circle. So you, if you were to draw a circle with a radius of one, that would be the equation of the circle. And this point right here would be one of the points on the circle. Then solve for r. So r squared equals zero squared plus one squared, which means r squared equals one. So r equals one. So when you go to the Go back to the very first definitions of sine and cosine. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, okay? But what if I call the bottom the x-axis, going up is the y-axis, and then this is r. So if this is the angle that we're talking about in general theta, then tangent of theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So it's equal to y over x. So that means that tangent of theta, oops, I meant to say tangent of 90 degrees. So in this case, tangent of 90 degrees equals y over x. And that causes division by zero, so that means it's undefined. Now let's see what the calculator has to say about that. So right now I'm in radians, so I could just do the original problem, which said, what's tangent of pi over two? And what does the calculator think about that? That that is an error. It's not in the domain. So if you put go to, it's gonna say this pi over two thing, I don't like it, it's undefined. Okay, then I was looking at the online homework and there is one of the way to look at radians. So suppose that you have a circle with radius one. And then suppose that you measure this little arc right here and the letter for arc length is S. So suppose that that's a length of one. Then how much is this angle? Well, let's do this in degrees first of all. 
So the total of the circumference, circumference would equal 2 pi times 1. Oh, it looks like I'm going to be doing it in radians. Okay, we'll do it in radians. So in total, this circle has a length of 2 pi. And then this would just be a fraction of it. So then s would be 1 out of 2 pi. So 1 is the red length. Out of the total length is 2 pi. Then how much is the angle theta? Well, theta is actually just a fraction of the circle also. So that means that theta is going to equal, well, in total, the angle, if you went all the way around the circle, would be 2 pi. But then this is just a fraction of it. So it's got to be the same fraction. It's 1 over 2 pi. And then the 2 pi and the 2 pi are going to cancel. That means that theta equals 1. So that is 1 radian. So that's another way to define radians. Instead of doing it the way that I did at the beginning, you do it like this. Circle of radius 1. What if this arc length equals 1? Then it turns out theta equals 1. So it's sort of like with the metric system, things turn out very nice, like one kilometer is exactly 1,000 meters. Wow, how did that turn out that it's exactly 1,000? Well, that's how the system was set up. Okay, so that's the end of this section, and then we're going to be doing applications with radians in the next section.